96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. From what the I may find out, certain people not like me. Everyone cut us back at thing now. Makes true me, I do it like Nike. But me not fear no guy now. No matter how hard they must fight me. Me just a go and do me thing now. Me just a do it like Nike. 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 Talking Heads with Naughty is brought to you by BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, Fine Threads, John's Department Store, Joker's Wild, KFC, Nassau Cruise Port, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's and Games, Sun Oil Limited, and Tropical Gyros. The Monday, January 8th edition of Talking Heads is on and popping your boy New Order Unity Company right up until 6 p.m. And we got a fully loaded episode today. Uh, we got lots to talk about and lots of people to talk to. Um, we're going to set it off. Obviously, I'll let you know how to chime in in short order. All right. Um, and when we get to the flip side of the break, as you know, on the flip side of the break, we'll be talking to Mr. Matt Aubrey from Org and uh, Roscoe Thompson will be chiming in from Abaco. But uh, before we get to that, uh, on this side of the break, some of you, when you hear this now, this is not a joke. This is not, you know, me and, and my good friend here deciding to have some fun on the radio. And don't get to know Vishwa thinking, because he's told me before he sat out in the chair, he good. So don't get no ideas. But Mr. Ed feels good to see you. How are you? I'm hanging in there, man. Happy New Year and all that good stuff. All the way. I'm liking the, the throwback plaid, Biggie Smalls, Lumberjack style. <laughs> I like it. And, of course, you got my good friend over the here. Final. Yeah, looking good. And, 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 and over here, we got the legend himself, Mr. Phil Stubbs. And, and I'm thinking that's Jacob's coat of many colors that's right there, yeah, boy. That's the dream that, coat that, right I, there. I think that's Africa. We good, so, but I, I, I'm, I'm humbled to be here. Good to see you again, Mr. Stubbs, yeah. as always, man. You know I'm a big fan and love playing your music over the years, and I'm so glad to see that you now have an opportunity to, to, to you know, entertain thousands of Bahamians out there at the cruise port. Yes, man. Thanks a lot. And good to be here, too. Happy New Year to you. There you go. And, and it's all going down um, at the uh, Amphitheater on Saturday, January 13th. And I, a lot of, I know this part of your, your baby, you're one of the big advocates for making this happen. It's a beautiful facility out there. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, it's the first, uh, uh, well, maybe there was one before, but it's certainly the pr- only present uh, facility that's a preset stage. So what I mean by that, obviously, is that when there are concerts in this town, we have to build stages. We have to build stages. We have to build, you know, essentially arenas to create, you know, to, to create that environment. The am- amphitheater is a, uh, a fully plug-in facility. Plug and play. Plug and play. So you know, it it, it makes it easy for the uh, promoters and for others who want to use the venue. And it's and it used for many re- people. Like BPL had their party there. Uh, other companies had their party there. There's uh, big concerts like the Taurus Riley and the cruise ships are doing things with it. And, of course, we promote things. We do, you know, pro- concerts. We try to focus on a lot of the local stuff. And um, and and this is in really in collaboration with Zamar, who is our audiovisual folks. And they're, they're committed to several concerts a year. And this is their first. A great way to be a first, though. I mean, I think you can get, get plenty, you know, Tourists gonna love it, but Bahamians, this is something they've been waiting for for a minute. Paul and Anna can't stop talking about this every day, every day. <laughs> really? What? Well, you know, Paul could talk, but they, when he get on one focus train of thought, that's when he, when he scares you. <laughs> well, Talks about a, a lot of things, but when he focuses on one thing, that's when yeah. you. <laughs> well, Paul called up um, and said, "Look, man, you know, <laughs> how could we partner with you?" He said, "Well, you know, give us three hundred thousand dollars, and we could." No, I mean, I'm just joking. <laughs> but, but, uh, if that's the case, Paul, uh, Ed and I would like to do a comedy concert with Cat Williams yeah, next yeah, month. Yeah. We need 1.5. Yeah, but um, no, no. So the garden and you know, jumped on board, and uh, obviously, you know, from its perspective, getting the word out, um, you couldn't really ask for a better uh, partner. And um, yeah, this is where we are. So, you know, tickets are at Bahamas E uh, Tickets uh, dot com, and uh, you know, we encourage people to buy online, buy early. They have uh, VIP tickets, which are, I think, 75. 75, the, the general admission, 15. You got sky pods as well. Mm-hmm. So if you want to bring a group of 12, you can get your own little thing, get some uh, some liqueurs, some spirits, and some uh, uh, some little, little light fear, and a little party, but then a party, you know? 
That's how you're doing. It's going down this Saturday, like I said, and, and tickets are moving. So you got to get to uh, BahamasTickets.com. That's real easy, real simple, BahamasTickets.com. Get your tickets online, 50 for the general, 75 for the VIP. All the SkyPod information will be available there. And, of course, we got this gentleman right here, Mr. Mr. Phil Stubbs, the legend himself. Please tell me the whole, the whole catalog, right? Are you having me in the back? Are you having me in the back throwing money on this day? Come on, for the way of Come, 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 come. Let's go, man. Well, I'm going to try to do a litany of my material. Mm -hmm. And so hopefully uh, everyone will be pleased. Man, look here, man. I, I, I got a list I can slide you off here. <laughs> I can need to hear. All right? I mean, there's certain things I can need to hear. Because okay. like I said, a party within a party. Mm -hmm. I'll be pacing myself at the party in the party until I can hear those things. Then I can just break right out. Okay. I mean, I yeah. think and I think the energy is going to carry, Phil, because like he said in the last uh, concert he did, which had not been, you know, that concert was 20 years in the making. Yeah. Is that uh, basically he's, he was able to conserve energy because everyone in the audience sang all the songs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I, I mean, I was elated with that, you know, right from start to finish. They I, seem to know the songs better than I, better than myself. And so that was kind of scary because if I missed the words. <laughs> yeah, hey, you wait got a minute, minute. <laughs> Hey, wait, you got back yeah, up a yeah, little yeah. bit here. That's like the Lionel, the Lionel Richie concert had the same vibe, right? Where every, uh -huh. See, you know, concerts, I'm at the stage in my life now where, you know, concerts don't move me. Mm. Because there's very few concerts where... Especially in the music being produced today, where the guy has a, a you know, this uh, prolific um, a catalog where, you, where they're hits, where you know all the songs. So you go to co these concerts now, and you know, you're literally sitting there waiting for two, two for them to sing two songs that you happen to know. So you're kind of like, kind of bored. But when you go to a concert like Mr. Stubbs over here, you can know every song. Everybody, and yeah. something coming, you have something for everybody there. <laughs> but I tell you what, it's a gambit. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what, I did uh, 15 songs. At the farm. Okay. Right? And I didn't do, we kind of cut age because I got frightened of 16, right? And, and uh, <laughs> you know, I was going to drop the frogs, and Fred say, bo said, boy, he said, hey, look here, frogs was one of the songs that brought you to the dance. <laughs> so you, yeah, man. Cut. So I cut age. But after the, after the concert, after it was all over, this fellow came up to me, he said, man, Mr. Stubbs, I enjoy the concert and all of that, man, you're great. He said, but man, I brought my grandmother here just to see, to hear you sing Age. He was I highly felt, disappointed. I, I said, I was disappointed. <laughs> he said, but next time, I felt so bad, you know, really. Man, listen, you, know, you, know, you don't say you don't do the frogs at the farm, right? Yeah. You know, and the frogs got to come croak up here, too, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the frogs up here, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listen, my, my, I already got a task to jam in, and I'm... Do we have any, we, we got a bonefish for Lee sighting on there? Yeah, we, we, we got to do bonefish. That's a All right, relax. Don't text me no more. You heard it from the man himself, okay? That's a yeah. Calm down. Woke up but you know what's also morning to the yeah. rising sun. Shh, there you go. <laughs> see? You see? But, but the, what, is, what is interesting, uh, Nordy, is, and we didn't plan it this way, but, you know, we have uh, uh, Nishi L.S., uh, Ira, and, of course, you know, Fred Ferguson is Correct. Is, uh, I was just is, about to get to that. Up, um, uh, you know, Tingham and them backing up uh, Phil. And the thing is, you know, ja unfortunately, you know, they do the holiday where it's Wednesday is the holiday, uh, majority rule day. But, you know, what, what better uh, follow-up for the weekend, right, than this all Bahamian. And by the way, we focus on, and I got to make sure I tell Nietzsche uh, and, and, and Ira to, to adhere to this, not only all Bahamian music, but all Bahamian written music. You know, what people don't realize that there's a lot of songs out there that people call Bahamian music. Mm -hmm. but And they are because Bahamians are doing them, but they're not Bahamian written songs. You know, all I ain't here, for instance, is a country western song. <laughs> you didn't know that? I, I know. I know we yeah. got a lot of covers going on, a lot of remixes and remakes. Yeah, you know, you know, all of them, so Stigley, all of them, they, you know, the great songs perform great. Yeah, they got a little mix. Prior. But they, you know, but they, they, the Bahamians sing their Bahamian songs. And this original, all the aiming, true and true. Yeah. yeah. Start to finish. Now, listen, um, you, you can get the stress on there. <laughs> See, Monday, you know? stress. Tuesday. That's what I tell him. I used to be so stressed out, you go ask me to get the flu. I just run down. And they got the flu. And boom, you go right into the flu. That's the flu I broke up. <laughs> Thank you. They sleep all night. Thank you. <laughs> don't give them too much now, Phil, because otherwise they won't pay the money. <laughs> all right. So there you go. That's the signal right there. But I'm glad to, to, that you guys stopped by. And, and just want to remind everybody, January 13th, Nassau Cruise Port, if you haven't experienced it, 
This would be a great way to experience the amphitheater. All right, it's going on on the 13th, which is Saturday. Phil Stubbs, Nishi, Iris Thorne, the Spang Band, Off the Chain Entertainment. Off the Chain, not because, listen, you know it, Phil Ringing, but don't forget Iron M, you know. Oh, no, Iron M is, is a different breed, you know. Great, great. Mm-hmm. Iron catch big growl like that. <laughs> <laughs> and if you come into general admission, bring your chairs, bring your blankets, and uh, VIP, there's going to be seating for you. Um, and, um, and and then of course in the sky part you really got to get seated otherwise you got to get your money back. There you go. But, um, that's another song, Phil. Get your money you back. Get your you money back. Get your chair. You get your money back. <laughs> right. Right. You know, you think of a song on every hook. <laughs> so we want to we want to thank you for coming by. I got some tickets all week long to give away. Thank so, you, you, man. Very much. Hard item. And I appreciate you stopping by. Looking forward to it on Saturday. Mm. And uh, you know, I, 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 what, what time now? What time are you expecting to hit the stage? But I got to coordinate. I, I think Phil is going to probably be on around about. Let me see, uh, 9 to 9.30, right about 10.30. That's good time. See, I got I to gotta be somewhere yeah, between 9 and 9.28. Yeah. And then once I do that, yes. I, I'll be right there. So awesome. that's good time. Got awesome. on that time. And, and you know, I, I got my comedy portfolio covered and my obligations covered. Yeah. Looking forward to there seeing you. There you go. Man. All right, there you go. Oh, I, yeah. I'm definitely going to be there. Everybody, you definitely want to check it out. My great way to go on out and experience the amphitheater, like I said, this Saturday night. Tickets available for you at BahamasTickets.com. BahamasTickets.com. All right, you can't go wrong with that. That's to get them now. Don't say, but I won't get tickets at the door. Look, there's new things. There's big things. This, we've evolved. Yeah. <laughs> BahamasTickets.com, okay? Be sure to check it out. General 50, VIP 75, SkyPods available. And uh, we want to thank you guys for stopping by. And I got tickets to give away throughout the week, so keep on listening out for that. We're going to take a quick break. Flip side of the break, we'll be talking with Org. And we'll be talking Freedom of Information Now. We'll be chiming in with Abaco and Roscoe Thompson. So keep it right where you got it. The Tuesday, or sorry, the Monday, January 8th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. Gone to join the ranks of the great ones. Pioneered great conscript throughout the land. His music he cherished. Oh, he loved his guitar, so Ernest Tubbs was his name. But they called him Lazy Dude. Refined style with elegant taste Then fine threads is your place If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist Then fine threads is your place If you want to look suave and debonair everywhere you go Like you're supposed to be in a video Wanna step out and look great? Then fine threads is your place Refined style with elegant taste Then fine threads is your place Is your place Is your place Play with Island Games, we making dreams come true. Play with Island Games, we paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market, you get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy, and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play Island Games, we put in Bahamian's voice, guaranteed to pay. Island Games, we like them other jokers, we've been here from the start, from the bike to computer. Island Games, we can make your dreams come true. We playing with Island Games. The new KFC Nuggets have arrived. That unlike the no gets, ours are handmade using 100% white meat. Unlike the no gets, at KFC, we hand bread every day to achieve the perfect flavor. After you try our delicious and crispy nuggets, in the original recipe, you'll never settle for less. KFC, the real nuggets. It's finger licking good. We're back at you on the Monday, January 8th edition of Talking Heads. And uh, we're going to continue the conversation. And feel free to chime in. Phone lines are open. 323-6232. 325-4316. Text lines powered by Beach. Oh, toll free in, one, in any one of the family islands. Don't let me forget. 242-300-5720. 242-300-5720. Text lines powered by BTC. 422-GR96. 422-4796. Stream us live, take us wherever you want to go, guardiantalkradio.com. That's guardiantalkradio.com. Cable channel 969, BTC flow channel 612. That's how you get it in, that's how you get it on for fresh news, smart talk all day. 
right here at Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Mr. Producer, we got a uh, texture. Yeah, Vanilla, you get a chance. Let me, let me get to that. Now, we got a call on the line. All right. Well, we got guest in studio today. No stranger uh, to the show. Glad to have him here. Mr. Matt Aubrey. Thank you so much for having us. How are you? And of course, you know, good to see this young man again as always. You're the busiest dude I know. Every time I look up, you got an org advertisement running (laughs) on social media. (laughs) Facebook, Instagram, today. Like, this baby don't sleep. (sighs) Sometimes I don't. (laughs) There you go. So, what's going on, guys? Good to see you. We're glad to be here. Uh, We're talking this week and last week and next week all about the concept of freedom of information. Uh, the Freedom of Information Act, as as you would know, because you were one of those first people that were right, helping and to spread I, I, the word. Right, and just for context, in... I want to bring everybody up. So we are here today to talk about the Freedom of Information Act, indirectly the Procurement Act, you know, fiscal responsibility, things that are, that are important to, to what I've always referred to as me and you, Joe Public. You know, mm-hmm. they know us every five years to, to vote them in, and then they forget about everything they promised that they were going to do to change the landscape of the country, both politically, socially, financially, and here we are again. Two administrations back-to-back promised the Freedom of Information Act, but yet we have nothing as of January 8th, 2024. A lot of talk, a lot of, you know, smoke in the wind, but no Freedom of Information Act. And then, to have Mr. Mitchell come out with, 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 with such audacity in full chairman capacity, because obviously he wasn't wearing his MP hat or his foreign affairs hat, he wears many hats. They don't support the idea of a Freedom of Information Act? Well, and and to put when a, can I call BS, Matt, or am I wrong for calling no, it BS? No, but, but when you when you go back to it to give it even further depth, it's actually been four administrations that right. have not moved forward freedom of information into any sort of active way. Um, and I think for us, and we and you remember, I think we talked about this this summer. The budget budget that was allocated for freedom of information was was very minimal. It didn't you know for what they were talking about happening, it did not make sense that the funding was there to make it really happen. So it's not that surprising for us that this wasn't a top priority or, or some of the other sentiments that were expressed. But it definitely highlights to us the, the, the importance of this law, um, some, some education that I think we need to provide regarding whether this law actually has an impact, as you said, on the day-to-day person and what it might mean for life here in the Bahamas. And then also fundamentally the role that we see that citizens and private sector business owners have in terms of moving this forward. So, so we would like to talk a little bit about that over the next bit of time. Yeah, that's man, okay. that's obviously we want to talk about because obviously it's the education factor to know exactly how it does affect us. Because for, 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 for Mr. Mitchell to say it doesn't affect everyday Bahamians, it's, 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 you know, it's accounting in, in, in red tape. and but No. Right. I should have the right as a citizen to say, okay, we have, for example, a multitude of potholes in my neighborhood. I would like to find out who is supposed to fix said potholes so I can bring them up to snuff as to how many we have, mm-hmm. how urgent it is, and then if they can't get the job done, then I know, okay, I still know who it is now. I have the information to find out how much were they paid via Freedom of Information or Procurement Act. Right. Why were they given this contract? Who are they? Are they qualified? No wonder we can't get them fixed. And but I think it speaks too much to transparency and accountability, which are kryptonite to any, the majority of local politicians. Well, and or politicians and, worldwide today. And, and I think, well, I think, that, I think that's an argument. I think they're also, what we could make is that in times of crisis, people look to the immediate issues. Correct. And, and the truth is, we've been focused on the immediate for a long time, and it hadn't been solved. So how do we then allocate enough time to look at something that long-term can change the game? Um, Stefan, uh, as our assistant director, it oversees a lot of our engagement programs. He goes into the community right. across all the islands and talks to folks. And, and the, the, the argument that, say, freedom of information doesn't really matter to the day-to-day citizen, I think from your experience, and you may want to talk about this, is, is, is not really accurate. Yeah, uh, I think what we have found from uh, our conversations on the ground across many of the islands in the Bahamas um, is that a lot of people understand the importance of laws like freedom of information, and they want to see them um, come to the forefront. But naturally, um, there are a few things that go on that sort of uh, shroud the landscape. The first is people will be uh, most interested in having their more immediate needs met. 
It doesn't mean that uh, an, a law like freedom of information will not change in the day to day. But when we're not uh, informed to the point where we could see like this will affect right. your ability to live, um, it, it limits their uh, willingness to want to advocate. Uh, but in addition to that, I would say that um, that that rhetoric sort of perpetuates the idea that we can't do both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we've been promoting that we do know that folks understand is that as a country, we do need to be able to address multiple challenges at the same time. So we don't negate the idea that the cost of living is a, is a, it's a tremendous challenge. It Correct. impacts everybody. But something like freedom of information, while it may seem a little more distant from the everyday, is equally as important to uh, having those everyday challenges addressed. Uh, if you use the example of the road traffic, I myself have had to change my tires literally four times in the last month uh, right. because of, of potholes. And I'm not saying like I would just want to go and take the information and figure out who to point the finger at, but my ability to, to ascertain the information that will help me understand, well, why do these problems keep occurring? Is how, is, how is money being invested in ways that are more strategic? Are we putting band-aids on our challenges or are we addressing them at the root? Um, our, our ability to do that as citizens will always be limited by our access to information. So it does absolutely impact um, the day-to-day, -day, and I think people do get that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's why it's important to have discussions like this so folks can see it a little bit more right. how, how it translates and, into the day-to-day -day life. The transparency and accountability is about, obviously, your ability to oversee and see what's going on with government, find out how monies are being spent, how decisions are being made. But it's also, in many ways, other. it's for informing yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're that small local business and you're wondering, should I expand? You know, Is there an opportunity? If I see clear opportunities in the government procurement site and I see that, oh, matter of fact, people are being awarded those based on their skill, their merit, not based on who they're connected to or related or what party they ascribe to, I'm going to be more likely to say, yeah, you know what, it's time for me to make that investment. And we know in our family islands, particularly with our youth-owned businesses, with our women-owned businesses, with businesses owned by disabilities, these are, are critical parts of our economy that if we start to shore up, it, you see a benefit on a day-to-day -day basis. When people feel like the system works Make for them, part of the process. then they're right. more likely to put, to put, their, put their, their stake in. Listen, I mean... You know me, I'm, I'm, I'm the Yosemite sound type. I get the laundry, I, you know, I, I need to know how my money's spent. Right. You give me the pacifier, Freedom of Information Act, because I'm an act, I go entertain myself and see where it's spent. Right. Right. And, and, and everybody knows that I'm objective enough. If I see money well spent, I'll be the first one to jump out and say, this right. was well spent. Right. This was good toward the bottom line, and also it benefited the community in X, Y, and Z, and A, B, and C. Well, and Freedom of Information across the world is moved by that concept. Um, I had a chance to talk to the folks that launched the freedom of information movements in India. And I mean, this is a huge country, billions of people, lots of, and they have a very active process. Well, don't you know, it was actually driven by those people that had the absolute least amount of money. Mm -hmm. And they went into it with that concept that this is my money, so I should be able to know what it's being spent on, how Correct it's being spent. So when we think about that, when did freedom of information really kick in and what was the big recommendation when this law was passed? It was based on when the VAT first came in. So the understanding is that these laws, they make government make more effective decisions. They make government do spending in a way that is not going to be short term, but it's long term. They look at, uh, they look at the decisions they make have to now be comfortable to be seen in the light of day, and that changes the game, right? Similarly, when citizens feel like they have the power to make a decision to look and be informed about how government is doing, it changes your your level of deciding, can I be involved and will that involvement make a difference? So, so we've done the same thing for a long time and changes haven't really happened. I think it might be time for us to try something that's a little different. And, and this, I think, is, is an opportunity to do that. Let's go to the phone lines real quick because Carly, you've been holding for a minute. And boy, I tell you, it's going to be hard because this text line is blown completely up. I got, I got several questions for you. I'll okay. buckle up. All right. <laughs> okay. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? That was Papa Naughty. Good hey. evening to you and your caller. What's going hey, on, 52? Your guess. Uh, you know, Naughty, I love what the gentleman is saying, but you know, and the thing is, the freedom of the information for somebody, they mean so much. There's so much to access. There's so much questions to ask. You know, with the taxpayer model that he's talking about, and I was impressed with the story from India, right? It shows that we are still on a plantation because we don't need to know anything. We just need to listen to Master and believe everything that Master says. So one of the things that's quite disturbing for me is the diversion tactics of uh, the price of food, right? When they love the, their master to the north, America, 
America has passed an uh, Inflation Reduction Act. You remember that, right? In America, they passed an Inflation Reduction Act mm -hmm. in order to compensate for the rising prices in food. I ran in the food store yesterday. I saw the price of the olive oil. I buy certain products. Not because I live in the inner city. When I see the prices going up, Naughty, I know it's going to get any better. You see the prices on the fruits and the olive oil and all the avocado oil, et cetera, et cetera. So then my question becomes is, you know, I, I realize with all the procurement acts and the government uh, in intricacies and, and, and their, and their spe spending money, we need also that, I mean, that is in, in, in terms of information, right? But what, what is important to me also is I was pushing this from the scamdemic. I, the Freedom of Information Act is important to me because I want to find out the cycle threshold on these positive cases that they're calling uh, positive for COVID-19. There is a cycle threshold of the PCR test. So it, it was disclosed by Dr. Fauci and everybody in the scientific community knows that any cycle threshold over 25 is basically, basically a negative. So what the world government has been doing because they were mandated by the puppet master is to call something that they ran all the way up to 40, which is no viral loads, but then it's just because the PCR test is a multiplication process in which it magnifies, and it can also pick up dead viral particles. I don't want to get it. What I'm saying is I need to know the cycle threshold that you call in positive. The government hasn't said if they're using 25, if they're using 30, if they're using 35, if they're running it all the way up to 40. If they're running it over 30, those cases are negative. So what I'm saying is freedom and fair is at war. You understand me, my brother? Yeah. So the public of the Senate, of course, see, I ain't come on the radio the way what people think, or who agreed with me, or who sound good, or mel mel uh, harmonious voice, mel 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 or whatever, right? What I'm saying is that's what we're all about. We want to sound good, but we're not doing good. And we cannot get good from doing bad. So if we are lying to the masses and deceiving the masses, how can you then call and say, why don't you deal with health care to show the people who love them? I'm not about food, because you're only trying to do, the, most of the food people get in the food store buying dog food anyhow, because of the price of the food, they're going to eat corned beef and all these other food again up, sending them to the hospital to exacerbate the problem. Sugar and dog food, and then the hospital loaded up and you can't get service, but you telling me you care for me, and you ain't trying to improve the health care system. From the pandemic, they have done nothing naughty. People are still waiting on surgery. Come on, man. Nothing this, brother. I kept telling you, man. I yeah, brother. in a mess. And 52, you've been, you've been documenting this ever since the pandemic. So I appreciate the updates, and I appreciate your passion in that regard. And, and, and like I say, to each his own, there's, there's, there's branches of society that want and, and need information pertaining to pertinent issues that are important to them. And, and that, that's another thing that comes up about the Freedom of Information Act. People say, well, not everybody's going to use it. And that's true. But the benefit of having it in place and knowing that it's you can use it. better than not when, having it in place. And whether it be health issues, whether it be concerns or, you know, what's the, the latest development that's in my community and what's in the heads of agreement that, that we need to know. Or understanding that said, hey, we saw expenditures that were supposed to be allocated for this. Did they get used for that? All of this stuff helps citizens to feel like the system is, is meeting their needs. And when they do, a lot of the skepticism that we see that we're not sure where it comes from can start to go away as well. Mr. Producer, I think we got another caller coming through, but before we get to that caller, all right, gents, buckle up. Here we go. Boy, I tell you. <laughs> Great. And who, if you haven't wants to feel them, could feel them. <laughs> Great show as usual, Naughty. You really think that any MP wants freedom of information? For the MPs, that's counterproductive. How could they misappropriate their funds if the information and what they're doing is free and available? That's never, ever going to happen. That's bad for business, like you always say. Well, I think that... Um the reality is uh, a lot of a lot of times laws like freedom of information are seen to be uh, these aha gotcha sort of, of bits of legislation. But the reality is um, freedom of information isn't just a tool to catch people when they do the wrong thing. What it is is a tool that allows us to follow what's going on so that we can be informed. And it also reduces the, the chances that these things can happen in the first place. I think that the argument that there can be an individual MP, for example, that may not be excited about that prospect, I can't say whether or not that is true. But what I can say is that in a democratic society, the things that we put forward should be based on the will of the people. And in truth, even though there's a lot of uh, discrepancies around what the actual job of an MP is, at the heart of it, we do know that it is to represent the voice and the desires of the people that they represent. And so this isn't necessarily a matter of what the desire of the MP is. What it is is a matter of what the people would put forward. And so it's our goal to empower ourselves to, to put forward the things that we feel are most important. And, and in the instance of freedom of information, the truth is we're 50 years old. We have a, a long road ahead of us. 
But it's one of those things that, that allows us to grow and become more accountable, more transparent, more responsive to the needs of local communities. It builds bridges between the government and the people, which as Matt would have made mention to earlier, many, many studies from around the world prove that when there are more pathways for government to connect and communicate and exchange information with its people, uh, the, the state of it, its economy improves, the decision-making processes improve, people are, are better able even to, to siphon their feedback because sometimes we don't know where or how to, to even put forward constructive criticism because we don't really understand mm -hmm. how decisions uh, were made and where these things came from Mr. in the Producer, first place. I think we got another couple of calls. Just double check that for me. So true, <laughs> especially with constructive criticism. <laughs> All right, um, good day, Naughty. I'm confused with the information between the PM and, and Mr. Mitchell. Both have different opinions in reference to the Public Disclosure Information Act. Mr. Mitchell opposes it while the PM will deal with it. It's confusing. What, what are they really saying? And I, I, think, I, I think... Are you, are you the politician whisperers that may be able to <laughs> break that down? No, but I think, I think both the, the, the last texture and this texture hit on something crucial. And the question is, will government drive this forward as a priority on its own? And the likelihood is maybe not. So where does that need to happen? So what, we've, what we're doing at this time is we're encouraging citizens to let the PM know, let the, PA, let the MPs know, let, let the persons that you've elected know that this is a priority. Send a letter, send an email, tweet them, give them a little message, you see them in the community. Say, we, we want this issue to be prioritized and make sure it's sufficiently funded. A lot has actually happened on this. Um, we have uh, retired Justice Keith Thompson, who serves as the Information Commissioner. He's got an incredibly uh, talented deputy in Shane Miller. They've done a tremendous amount of the groundwork. They've done trainings. They've built out a system for implementation. They've developed regulations. But the funding to move it forward, to, to make sure that the technology is in place, the uh, approval of those regulations, they still sit on the government side. So it's up to the public to say that this is a priority to the people that you've elected to represent you. All right, here we go. Here's a couple of more. According to the chairman of the PLP, the New Day government opposes the Freedom of Information Act, the Procurement Act, and the Fiscal Responsibility Act. Is the chairman of the PLP suggesting that the New Day government opposes accountability and responsible governance? You got to ask him if you see him. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we can necessarily speak on behalf of, of them per se, but what I can say is it'll always go back to the fact that... Uh, if we recognize something that we disagree with, then we need to take the responsibility to speak up for or against that thing. And I do believe that if we, if we just look at the history and if we look at uh, some of the best practices around what good governance look like, all we can do is echo that those things are absolutely, absolutely paramount to, to the progress of the Bahamas. And, and what I think we found, we, you know, we were part of those groups back in the days when you were giving us a, a lot of airtime on this, Naughty, to, to pass the legislation. We were part of 22 different organizations that, that worked together. We had about 50,000 people behind us in terms of pushing forward on this. And we passed a law that we thought represented, a, more, more, more than not, the interests of the people. But when you can pass the best laws, if you don't have an active citizenry involved, they're not going to really come to fruition. And so we spend a lot of time now out in the communities talking to people about how to raise their voice, how to get involved, how to get informed, because that makes the difference. So whether it be freedom of information or the full enactment of the procurement law or the, a, a, a new transparent, more functional Public Disclosures Act, whether or an information commissioner, a commission or a whistleblower's law, whatever these things are, they're going to require the voice and the interest and the input of Bahamians, not only to make it passed and get enacted, but also to make sure that as it's being used, it's being used in the right way. It can't be expected that one, one area of government is just going to make that happen. It has to be something that all of us get involved in. All right, we got uh, another one here. Naughty, the Freedom of Information Act is dead on arrival. There will not be any enforcement of it. Will the Freedom of Information Act open up the so-called secret cabinet meetings? If it doesn't, then the Freedom of Information Act is useless. So the law does not allow uh, the, that they have to share or does not require that cabinet uh, proceedings are shared. However, information that can be used or is used to make cabinet decisions can be accessed. So the law is pretty specific about what information can be shared and what can't. But, but to take it further, there is a set forward an independent information commissioner that is able to then adjudicate. If you feel like I asked for this information, government said that they won't provide it to me, they look at it against what's established as a public interest test, which is supposed to favor the citizen's interest to determine if it in fact is, is due 
uh, if it in fact is just that the information was not provided. So that's the, that's the dictate of the law now. That's what's in place. We need to see how this works and, and plays out, obviously, but, but we don't want to lose the momentum of all the folks in the 10 agencies that have been trained I, over I, the last year. We don't want to lose That's what I was going to ask. Why, why, why would, I mean, and I got text. I was about to ask it. Right. I had somebody text me the same question. Why were those 10 to 12 agents trained right. in a specific agency to do a specific task involving the Freedom of Information Act and now nothing? Well, I think a part of the uh, the challenge becomes the investment in the in the office and its operation. Um, one of the things that we've noted before was that the the budget that was put forth um, was not nearly sufficient for what was needed to actually run right, the right. office. And I, we will not negate the training as as not being an important step because it needed to happen. And I think that the skills that are required to make this this process that's going to take a few years to get um, into to the fullness of what it should be. That's going to take time. But it will also take a budget that's reflective ah. of, of, of what the needs are. So if we can't get beyond that point, then we're definitely going to remain challenged. And, and one of our calls to actions is definitely for the citizens to call for that budget to be revisited so that it does reflect what the needs of the office actually are. Well, this is definitely a hot topic. We're going to let it go over into the 5 o'clock a little bit. But we've got a couple of calls right now, so let's get to them real quick before we get to the 5 o'clock. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, Naughty. Good afternoon. Good hey, afternoon. what's going I'm on, Jeff? Albury, and doing? good afternoon to the, uh, to the other young gentleman in the studio. That's uh, uh, Stefan. Uh, Stefan, okay. Uh, Naughty, very interesting conversation. You know, the good part about this is it seems as if with, with a form such as what you're doing right now is one of the very few opportunities that the citizenry can ha actually have their voices heard nationally. Uh, the government, uh, successive governments, but this one in particular, have not invited town hall meetings yet to the level that allows their employers the right to address them as employees to get these acts passed. What is so sad about it is politics in this country has the people so divided that they don't see that, that some of the persons out here fighting for the rights of what we are trying to get the, the so-called uh, representatives of us in Parliament to enact. They are, they, we are shooting ourselves in the foot because we are so hell-bent on po political parties and personalities. I can say this much to you here. Uh, right now, as it stands in a lot of the social media groups that we are in, we talk, many of us talk about how to advance this country, how to advance the behavior, financial and ownership prosperity in this country. And yet we have these political pundits who are part of these political parties always attacking the people who are trying to fight for the rights for us to live comfortably in this country. And the sad part about it is not only what we are fighting for for ourselves, but we're also fighting for them. And they, they will attack you because you are not a not one of their political pop. Uh, it's ridiculous, and we are not going to go anywhere fast. So, Matt, I congratulate you. I <laughs> congratulate you, Stefan. And I must encourage you to continue pressing this. But I also encourage you to continue the town hall meetings to bring the people together, educate them into what is at stake here in this country for us as a people, because very shortly, if we don't correct these problems, then when, when it's time to go and correct the problems, it will already be too late because the new plantation owners will have already taken over. So congratulations to you guys, and now they continue the great work. Thanks for taking Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate your call, man. Thank you, sir. All right, let's get... Uh to the break, Mr. Producer. Flip side of the break, we'll get to the news. Outside of the news, we'll be back at you. We'll continue the conversation with Matt and Stefan from Org, and we'll uh, be continuing to talk Freedom of Information Act, Procurement Act, Fiscal Responsibility, and uh, how you can get involved and how important it is to you, and it affects you each and every day, one way or another. So uh, we'll continue the conversation in the 5 o'clock hour, and yes, people that talk sports, you all often think getting off the hook. I can remind you all how you all reversed into the playoffs. How could, a, how could a dolphin swim backward with that tail? You all tell me, eh? Anyway, it's all coming up right after the break. Don't touch it.
the new KFC Nuggets have arrived. That unlike the no gets, ours are handmade using 100% white meat. Unlike the no gets, at KFC, we hand bread every day to achieve the perfect flavor. After you try our delicious and crispy nuggets, in the original recipe, you'll never settle for less. KFC, the real nuggets. It's finger licking good. John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion and at your feet. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Nassau Cruise Port presents Phil Stubbs Live at the all-new Nassau Cruise Port Amphitheater. January 13th. Gates open at 7 p.m. Showtime 9 p.m. Book your tickets now at BahamasETickets.com. General admission $50, 75 VIP. Prepare to be blown away as we kick things off with one of the Bahamas' beloved artists. You're raking and scraping with Ira Store, Nishi LS, and Phil Stubbs Live. Live. Sponsored by Kalik and Ron Ricardo. Nassau Cruise Port. The place to be. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one -on -one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. Five, four, three, two, one. Are you ready to catapult your business into the spotlight? Introducing Guardian Business Boots. Ignite your success and it's absolutely free to join. Did you say free? Yes. Free! Guardian Business Boost is not just a program. It's your ticket to unprecedented visibility and growth. The Guardian Media Group is committed to helping the Bahamas prosper by creating new opportunities for small businesses who are the key drivers of that growth. How does it work? It works by first registering your business with the Guardian Business Boost at the NassauGuardian.com. Then, each month, Guardian Media will pick and boost five businesses with one month of free ads across our multiple advertising platforms. The Nassau Guardian newspaper website, Guardian Radio 96.9, Star 106 Hits, and all social media platforms. Catapult your business into the spotlight with Guardian Business Boost. Sign up for free today at the NassauGuardian.com. Naughty Johnny's Restaurant can only be described as the experience you want to recreate again and again and again. Their motto is simple food done well. You're welcome into their home at Naughty Johnny's where you can dine on crack conk, conk fritters, and other Bahamian favorites. There's also an international flair that's guaranteed to offer something for everyone. Enjoy a good meal and listen to live band on their patio Friday and Saturday night or brunch on Saturday and Sunday only at Naughty Johnny's Restaurant in the Old Town Plaza, Old Fort. They're open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Friday, 10 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday, and 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. Naughty Johnny's. Well, what the truth? Struggling to repay your loan? Let us help you get back on track with payment terms that suits your financial situation and improve your credit score and credit report with the Bahamas Credit Bureau. Inquire about our restructured loans today. Call us at 356-7764. Nassau Cruise Board presents Phil Stubbs Live.
at the all-new Nassau Cruise Port Amphitheater. January 13th. Gates open at 7 p.m. Showtime 9 p.m. Book your tickets now at BahamasETickets.com. General admission $50, 75 VIP. Prepare to be blown away as we kick things off with one of the Bahamas' beloved artists. You're raking and scraping with Ira Store, Nishi LS, and Phil Stubbs Live. Live. Sponsored by Kalik and Ron Ricardo. Nassau Cruise Port, the place to be. We're back at you on the Monday, January 8th edition of Talking Heads. And we're continuing our conversation over into the 5 o'clock hour. I hang for a, up into the first break. I continue the conversation with Matt and Stefan from Org. And like I say, the text line's been blowing up. This is a very good, good point that was brought up here. There's a couple of things. What is this another one? Oh, boy. <laughs> why, why, why? This is a good one. I only could read it because he's a friend, and I know he can take a good joke when he has it. Great show as usual, Naughty, but Luby Georges has a better chance of being prime minister before we get a freedom of information. <laughs> <laughs> Luby's laughing. I know. Luby likes a good joke. I, yeah, that's why I read no, it. Nice. I know. But it's, 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 yeah, come on. Look at the name of the opposite of the show. Is, but still, I was, oh, Lord. My, I tell you, I have a bigoty and bumptious. I got the best listenership going, but let me tell you, man. They smart, but they could be smart, Alex, if they re- when they're ready, too. Um, here's another one uh, th- that came up that I thought was, was pretty good. Uh, Naughty, this should be taught as a civics course in high school so kids, no matter their economic status, come out of school aware before they begin voting, before they get put into the rat race. This should be mandatory, especially uh, reading and learning the Constitution. Right. So I, I definitely want to speak to that. Uh, we, have, we have been uh, getting a lot of that sort of commentary about the general work that we do, when it, particularly when it comes to civic education. And so over the period of the last 18 months or so, we have visited 10 islands and we have made it a point to visit local primary schools on, on trips um, to each of the islands in the Bahamas. As an NGO, of course, we're dependent on uh, funding from foundations and from the community. Uh, to make our work possible, uh, but the reality is that point is is absolutely true. And I think what it does is it it it, it really promotes this idea that we are not trying to promote a culture of just catching people when they do wrong. We're trying to prepare Bahamians to thrive in their country. Um, and the reality is if we start young and if we build into our system of education an understanding of what it means to be informed so that you can be involved and make informed decisions, um, starting young will always be the key to, to effectively being able to do that. So we've, we've definitely thought about how we can beef up our work um, and even speak to the Ministry of Education about ways to incorporate some of this into some of the existing civics curriculum. It's something that they have revisited, um, and I know that they've been doing work on it, but these sorts of, of, of laws you know, I was nervous about going to fourth graders and talking about, not to say that we go into each law in depth, but talking about uh, the role of, of, of laws and, and how they play out. But young people, they have a great capacity um, mm-hmm. to, to take on this sort of information uh, as long as it's presented in, in the appropriate way. So we've worked with teachers to make sure that yeah, we I do al- that. I also want to highlight the work that Stefan and his group has done related to this, though, because there's a number of free resources, things right. that folks can access right now, mm-hmm. uh, no cost, just go ahead and do it. Um, if you go to orgbahamas.com, our website, there's a section called the Citizen Solution Center. And in that site, we've got a number of different tools. One's called Access Parliament. Mm-hmm. where you're going to be able to learn about what is Parliament about, what's the role of the MP, who are the MPs, how do you find the MP that's connected to your constituent, and ways to encourage you to get involved. Uh, we have a policy review center, which you can actually look at the laws yourself and have a way to say, do you like this, do you not like this, and that will be shared directly with government and the opposition and anybody in public. But, but we also have something called Freedom Schools, and Freedom Schools were developed 
as a way for folks to get involved and just start to understand civic education. And that talks about the Constitution. It mm -hmm. talks about ways you can get involved. It talks about how to be a, an advocate and gives you some skills. And so folks can go online on orgbahamas.com right now and get those resources. So if there's educators out there or there's people who lead youth groups and you find interest, you can feel free to use those materials or reach out to us and we can work with you to try and build something out for your group. Uh, it, it's critical that we work together on this, but but there are free things. You don't have to wait. Right. You have to wait for us. You can get started right away. And and there's a key tool in in both Freedom Schools and and that we incorporate into much of what we do in in our uh, educational curriculum, and it's a module on MP engagement. Uh, we we continue to say that the engagement of our MPs and with our MPs, the healthy, productive engagement, is a very underutilized tool for change um, in the Bahamas and. Um, we prom we promote the idea that people need to know one who their MPs are, where their constituency office is, and what the uh, primary contact for their MP is. It seems a little fruitless sometimes, but it's because what ends up happening is people get passionate, upset, frustrated about an issue when it happens to them in a the moment, and then they go in alone. But the reality is uh, this idea that we need to act and speak and, and move collectively to make a difference will create a landscape where I think we can see more results. Um, and so to echo what Matt said, um, if you are in any sort of position, if you want to educate yourself or if you work with a civic group, a, a school group, a youth group, or any even any adult groups, not only are those resources available, but we're happy to make ourselves available to come and to present, um, travel when we can, uh, and uh, con uh, connect with the community and, and do it virtually, even if we're not able to come to everyone. Uh, it's it's one of the the big pushes that we have right now, and uh, the email that you can reach our engagement team at is citizens at orgbahamas dot com or our general email info at orgbahamas dot com if you are interested in connecting around um, any of these courses because we got to start somewhere. So we've been busy. That's one of the reasons we haven't been sleeping as much sometimes because <laughs> we've been out there. <laughs> well, I'm glad you got the info because some folks ask how could they get more information, right. you know, and and I guess. How, how could they be affiliated or join or get information from all you guys got obviously a mailing list and so on and so forth, yeah. correct? If I could put another thing forward, we are definitely this year looking for more volunteers to help us break down this information. So folks with maybe potentially legal backgrounds or law students or, or even anyone that is just interested in, in, in helping us to carry the information out to the community. The reality is we are fully dependent. Shout out to the teachers of the Bahamas who have been an integral part of our recent campaigns like Freedom Schools and Active Citizens Bahamas and, and leaders of different community organizations, Rotaries and Rotaract and many groups at the University of the Bahamas. So, so, so many groups, too many to name, already putting my foot in my mouth here. Um, but, the but Family Island Chambers. The Family Island Chambers of Commerce who have who've definitely been um, on board with, with a lot of the information. Local government, we've done a lot of work with them as well. Um, but you can definitely... Uh, uh, we, we have lots of resources and information, and we are in this year looking to gain more volunteers on NASA and the Family Islands to do everything from helping to review and benchmark laws like Freedom of Information and, and the Ombudsman Act and the Procurement Act, um, as well as to go out into communities and help to get to, to just educate and empower people because knowledge is, is really power, and um, we believe that it's going to be up to us. Um, Matt and I were talking during the break about the fact that we often default. Well, we want them to do it. Well, someone should be doing it. Well, we're upset because they didn't do it. But the reality is we have to empower ourselves and educate ourselves to be able to take a stand and not just to be angry or radical, but to be informed on the regular basis and, and continue to have dialogues like these on the day-to-day -day with our kids and, and, and um, the next generation. Now, when you're informed and a little bit radical, though, that's when you become a dangerous weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. Why we, that's why we come and talk that's to you. Don't mind out the body spouting off. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but I, I got another question for you. And, and again, this speaks, I, I think, to, to, the, to the generational change. Right. You, you know, like Naughty, the Moses crew are a curse, and we will never get any <laughs> blessings as long as they're running our country, let alone any information. So I get you have some older, you know, you have some veteran behemoths that sit there and say, look, I, 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 I want this. I've been wanting this, but we know how these people go. We know how this system is. Then you have youthful exuberance to say, no, we can change this. And, 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 and that's why I support it. 
being a tweener, between the, you know, the bridge between the young and the old, <laughs> that, that, you know, look, we need to make it happen. Because I, I think no one is half the battle. Like you to say, no one is half the battle. Right. You might not get angry and wondering and upset if you know the information was right there and you realize what's going right. on and how it was spent and where it went right. to. And I think a culture where we understand that that can happen is what we're trying to build, right? Is that people would, where it isn't the concept of they won't ever let this happen. These folks have come in every five years and switched out one team for another based on the fact that the Bahamian people have power. They do have the power. Sometimes it's the power to move out. We want power to move in, move forward. <laughs> right. Um, so, so getting involved, getting informed, these are crucial, crucial steps. Uh, if you've heard nothing today, uh, I would say just take a minute and send an email, write a, write a letter, uh, you know, drop a note. You know, track down your MP and your constituency on a park on a weekend and tell them, we really want to see this law move forward. We want to make sure it's got the right amount of funding in the next coming budget. We have six months before that's going to happen. We can do a lot with that. But, but let's keep ourselves focused and let's ask for things that are going to make a difference, not only now, but also in the future. Now, I, I got this one question here. I'm not have your Freedom of Information Act yes, or the crew from Morgan been threatened or victimized in any way because of their freedom of information advocacy or stance? Uh, I or personally... Like business <laughs> no, I think that's, I think that's a, a, a decent it question. To a whole new level? No, no, well, I'll say this, and I'll, uh, maybe Matt's experience is a little <laughs> bit different. So I have been um, in doing community work for, for the last, uh, just a bit over a decade. Um, I had... A uh, career with the Bahamas National Trust before coming to Oregon. I've done lots of community work with children's homes and many, many community institutions. I think um, that has sort of kept us, kept me safe. Um, I haven't had any sort of attacks that I am aware of, and I hope that that does not change. But I will say that what I think is important um, that we try to do um, as an organization is to re to retain rather our objectivity and neutrality and just present information. Uh, we do have priorities that we want to put forward, like freedom of information, but we do our endeavor best to, uh, to sort of play the field in a way that gives people the information that they need to make decisions for themselves. And I think that for the most part, even though when you work in a space where you tell, where you give anybody constructive feedback, that that could be a little bit tricky, the reality is, um, in my interactions uh, with government officials from across both both sides of uh, all sides rather of the divide, um, folks have been quite receptive. Yeah. Even if we don't always see that reflected in in immediate movement, right. um, I think that there's there is a shared understanding that these things matter. But the missing link is people coming together to push for what they want to see. Right. I think. I think. By and large, I mean, and, and we each have this experience at org. We're in the community, in the grocery store, walking down the street, and somebody comes up and says, hey, you're doing great work. You know, keep pushing on that freedom of information. I know it doesn't seem like it's going to happen, but keep going, keep going. And that is, by and large, the most amount of feedback we get. We right. always have our detractors. <laughs> right. uh, having been in work for a social justice organization <laughs> for 30 years, I've taken some hits, and yeah. there are always going to be those that, that say that are naysayers or, or attack you on that. Right. But by and large, we get support from those those who are working in government, or those who are elected officials, right. those that uh, are in the community who, who understand the, the basics of what we're talking about. Org is not political. We're not affiliated with any one side. Right. We're not anti-government. We actually are very supportive of government and citizens and the private sector working together because we know that is the solution. That's the secret sauce. When everybody is doing their, their part, things will move forward in positive ways. And, and what we know is that when that happens, those that always and historically get left behind, the, the, the marginalized communities, they do better. They have more opportunities. They are more included. The social and the economic opportunities are more inclusive, not just a few, but for more. And that's what we're working for. So when people see that and, and give us positive feedback, it's very exciting. It's very enthusiastic. And I would say that's, that's more than anything what we hear. Right. And I think sometimes people have ideas on what our priorities as an organization should be. That doesn't always make them happy. Um, <laughs> and Matt tends to take the blows. Um, so I'm not complaining about that. Um, but I think that uh, from, my, from my personal perspective and, and those that work um, on my team at Org, um, we spend so much time on the ground that we are actually more inspired than one might believe working right. in this space because... Um, as tired as people are, as much as people have been going through, 
a lot of Bahamian people have a hope for a brighter future for us, and that's definitely the number one thing that fuels the work that we do at the organization. And I think that's the other exciting thing about what's going on with Oregon and the work is it's driven not by me as, as an individual. It's driven by this incredibly diverse team of folks, uh, mostly who are young Bahamians who want mm -hmm. to make change and feel like this is a pathway that's going to ultimately bear fruit. They're willing to knuckle under and stay through it and, and take the hits because they know that the future is going to be theirs. This country, they're going to inherit it, and it needs to be in a better shape than it is currently. Well, you know, you all definitely have a place here to get to continue to get the, the message out, to continue, uh, you know, to, uh, to uh, um, you know, voice the concerns of the community and obviously, you know, promote your platforms, Freedom of Information Act, Procurement Act, and, and all the others that go on, you know, because there's a huge umbrella at all. There's, there's all kind of programs that you guys are involved in. In about two more years, we'll be talking about voting responsibly and getting out and knowing Absolutely. your right to vote and all Absolutely. that. So not, not, not just two years. We'll be two years. Years. <laughs> We've been so working on it. I appreciate you all coming by. And, and like I said, you know, me cost has two costs. Whenever you need to get on and get the platform on, you know. And you, you know, sir. you got to get on on a Thursday, too, with Pearly Man and yep. chop it up with Earl of Pearl. All right, we'll do so. Because he's, he's a big man. fan of the Freedom of Information Act as well. Absolutely. All right, so thank you all for stopping by. You guys uh, know how to get in touch with, with Org. And, uh, you know, if, if there's anything else, we have the follow-up information. Just hit Mr. Producer and we'll get it for you. I want to thank you guys for stopping by, as always. Take a quick break. Flip side of the break, we'll be talking sports as the Monday, January 8th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. Struggling to repay your loan? Let us help you get back on track with payment terms that suits your financial situation and improve your credit score and credit report with the Bahamas Credit Bureau. Inquire about our restructured loans today. Call us at 356-7764. Nassau Cruise Port presents Phil Stubbs Live at the all-new Nassau Cruise Port Amphitheater. January 13th. Gates open at 7 p.m. Showtime 9 p.m. Book your tickets now at BahamasETickets.com. General admission $50.75 VIP. Prepare to be blown away as we kick as things we kick off with one of the Bahamas' beloved artists. You're raking and scraping with Ira Store, Nishi LS, and Phil Stubbs Live. Live. Sponsored by Kalik and Ron Ricardo. Nassau Cruise Port. The place to be. Naughty Johnny's restaurant can only be described as the experience. You want to recreate again and again and again. Their motto is simple food done well. You're welcome into their home at Naughty Johnny's where you can dine on crack conch, conch fritters, and other Bahamian favorites. There's also an international flair that's guaranteed to offer something for everyone. Enjoy a good meal and listen to a live band on their patio Friday and Saturday nights or brunch on Saturday and Sunday. Only at Naughty Johnny's restaurant in the Old Town Plaza, O Fort. They're open 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Thursday. 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. on Saturday and 10 a.m. to 10 p.m on Sunday. Naughty Johnny's. Well, what the truth. I got you on the Monday, January 8th edition of Talking Heads. You boy, Naughty Johnny's company right up until 6 p.m. And do we have Pearly zoomed in yet? The house. In the house. Pearly, what's going on, buddy? Uh, I'm here. Yeah, man. Oh. Look, look, before we get in, 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 into talking the obvious, let me get this out of the way. Please, allow me. Please, please, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Go ahead. To all your fluffy, feathery, stinking, no good, disgusting, eat out the garbage Philadelphia Eagle fans, you all know you will shut your mouth. I told you it was coming. 19 oh. years, 19 years, there's not been a repeat champion in the NFC East. And again, there will not be one this year. How about them Cowboys? NFC East champs, number two seeds. You stinking dirty Eagles. Guess what? Remember when you laughed when Michael Irvin broke his neck on your crappy field? God make ugly, but he don't like it. You know, I, I sit patiently and I, I pick my moments. But boy, I could pick my moment with you all. You lost five out of the last six? Probably this wasn't a team that was 10-1 and one and robbed you all in, in broad daylight, right? Sorry. One thing I believe about the NFL, 
the healthy teams are the teams that win, not the injured teams. Ah, and they no have matter how good they, they are. Injuries. And they got two they more yesterday. Injuries. Two key ones yesterday. And, and two key. And one thing that you said from day one, and, and it's proven, they miss their oh, offensive and defensive Jesus, they, they miss they them. <coughs> so much out of the points. So you so so anybody get right fired. Right. Siri, anybody get fired if they lose in the first round in an embarrassing way? No, he's going to get fired. fired. I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> I think he may make changes with his accord. If, 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 if he, if he gets, if he doesn't get fired, he's going to have to make a major overhaul to that coaching staff because one, yeah. he can't bring back he's the dude who he replaced with Matt Patricia because the, that trust level is gone. Patricia failed miserably in his in his time. Patricia can't coach without Belichick in his ear. They missed the coordinators that, that went to, to, to Indianapolis and, 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 and Arizona. Arizona. Come on, it's glaring. It's painfully obvious. Yeah, it, it, and, and that's, part of the, that's, part of the, that's part of the NFL. That's why it's very hard for teams to go two years in a row to be super like that for a long period of time. I see you call it get you one second. Agency, go ahead, go ahead, free buddy. Agency, free agency, the salary cap, injuries. No, no, but see, see, that's one thing that the Eagles can't the blame. Block. Nobody wheels and deals more than NGM Howie Roseman. Now Roseman yeah. will trade Roseman will trade midseason and he's done it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you but right the now. Thing about it is they go as far as Hurt carried up and Hurt has been hurt. Hurt has been hurt. And it's just he doesn't have it. So I think the locker is, room has gone on Sirianni though. That's why I say he may be fired, because I think the locker room has quit on him. Well, I haven't heard that anywhere. I haven't heard that and I heard some stories today that he's pretty safe. All right. I mean, AJ Brown right, gave him a, AJ Brown gave him a ringing endorsement, even though they've had issues. Yeah, it was AJ Brown. You do that's it. You know, but Doc has done well. Dallas has done well. You, you, um, they, they, they rode Stephen A. Smith hard today. You yeah, know, and and teased them big time. So, so much so we talk about, about it, the, the Packers going to upset us. It's going to be a good game, and the no, Packers are a good no, young he team. He said, he said that he don't expect y'all to lose as we get, but he expect y'all to lose before the Super Bowl. No, Stephen. Just how, anyway, let's go to the phone lines real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, ninety six point nine FM. Who's this? Tony, what's up, Saint Petersburg? Happy New Year, man. Hey, what's, what's up, Saint Pete? Pete? How about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? <laughs> Hey, I got a new, I got a, a new name for the Eagles. They call us the Cowgirls. They are the Eagles. Do me a favor, yeah, man. If you don't have one readily available, I'll, I'll FedEx you one. But I want you to go to Tampa Stadium. I want you to to watch the Eagles play the Bucks. Oh. And when the oh, Eagles come running out the tunnel, I want you to take that conch shell and brace one of them square in the head. Hey, hey, I got a conch shell, boy. Just hurl it down and bounce it off one of the helmets, hey. man. Hey, listen to me. I... I'm not a Bucs fan, but I'm riding with the Bucs on this one. Man, look at If a high school team play the Eagles, I'm a rep with a high school team. You hear me? I bet you, St. Pete. Wow. Boy, wow. Hey, 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 buddy. I'm for real. Man, I can't. Hey, if we don't win no game, as long as we beat the Eagles, our season is complete to me. Really? I got you. I got all you. All them Eagles farmers. They in first place and this, that. Man, man, hey. Last night, man, I was riding their bus. Hey, I, I had to put Well, you could have ridden somewhere else, but if that's what works for you, I ain't going to hold it against you. I mean, it's 2024. Man, man look here. They, the, the Eagles fan, when they win, man, they blow up, they blow up social media. When, when they lose, man, they, you got to put an APB for them, man. They be missing an action. Anyway, St. Pete, man, we feel you, man, and you keep holding it down for the 242 over there in town, man. Keep rapping okay, for Cowboy hey, Nation. Let hey. them know. Like I said, you can take the man of the island, but you can't take the island over the, over the man. Like Smokey said, you're born there, you're born there. You're born there, you're born there. Yeah, I'm a true bohemian. Two for two for life, baby. There you go. Be safe, man. Enjoy that traffic on the, on the highway, on the bridge now. Okay, yo, man, you know what? Be safe. St. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, stay fired up, boy. Yeah, man. He's, he's a loyal listener. I'm happy Good to Good people's him, man. Good people's man. But yeah, so you Eagle fans, man, you see me, just shut up. Don't say nothing. Boy. Don't say a word. And when I fucking put something disgusting and troll you, don't say nothing. Because remember when you all did it to me? I took it like a man. But now, will you see who's, who, who the real Eagles are and who the Sheagles are? I find very interesting with you, Naughty. And yeah, I could be hurtful too. You basically gave up on your Cowboys for halfway through the season. No, no, no. Stop. Get it right. 
I was extremely peeled, and I gave up on them after the 49er game. And excuse me, was okay. it not yes, by the band's dad was back in love again? Come on, man, Purdy. Break up to make up, that's all. You know, I talked myself into it again. <laughs> ah, Lord. Okay. But this last go round, you told me I was crazy, but when I talking pretty good, boy, I talking pretty good. I said they was going to get the second seed. They got it. I said the Eagles was end up you in did. the sixth seed. And now I'm going to tell you this. Here come the all upset. Right. Here come the upset. The Rams are going to knock off the Detroit Lions. Watch. I, I see that. I see that as a possible upset. But I told you before, no, don't, don't sleep on the Rams. I, I, tell I tell you that. that. I tell you that too. And I'll tell you something else. I'll tell you something else. And I, I know this goes to a to a painful turn now. But I'll tell you something else. Listen, um, I have you all going on the road in Kansas City and upsetting the Chiefs. Well, I'll tell you this. While a lot of Dolphin fans got a lot of flack for the loss yesterday. And I didn't they tell you they was going to lose the last two, the BB gun was going to get them, Baltimore yeah. and Buffalo? But I heard that, but I, I don't feel bad for the loss for several reasons. The first reason is, it's kind of hard. I see you call it, we get you in a sec. It's kind of hard to beat your division rival back-to-back games. Even though both Buffalo beat us back-to-back, we're well, not back-to-back, but two games in the season. But it's hard to beat them and come back, that's one. Miami has had too many injuries, and it has taken a toll on that team. I always say it's best to have these injuries in September than December, but they wasn't listening to me. So now they have the injuries in December, and they're paying for it. Um, isn't that more you can say? They just and you like to say this next man up, but there's a reason why there's QB one, RB one, wide receiver one, tight end one because they're the better players. And when they go down, whatever you put back, them steps is a step down for what you had. So. Uh- I feel better about playing Kansas City, even if it's in Kansas City at 10 degrees. Kansas City is not the team they were last year. They've not been the team all year. And if they, and mind you, this playoff time, Mahomes is playoff man, and they could beat, but they probably will beat us. But if they blink, they lose. Let's go to the phone lines real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Yeah, what's going on, Naughty? Hey, what's out in 52? Yeah, we got another call there, Kermit. Yeah, I, I sit down. I, I, I watched the first quarter, but it was a good game, you know, Burley. My, my condolences, you know. But uh, you all let me know. I was trying to get you all to win for us, right? Because, you know, I didn't even know. Uh, I was surprised, Burley, when I, le- I mean, I look at Buffalo record. I couldn't believe it because, you know, I was in, I'd be in and out because I'd be busy waking, you know what I mean? Yeah, and I couldn't yeah. believe uh, Buffalo had that good record. And it's just unbelievable. But uh, the thing is, I was looking at the game, and I saw, but, but I, I thought it was, it was a good thing. You know what he scored in the first quarter, right, Burley? Yeah. You know, no, man. You know, the, the, the first score went up in the beginning of the second quarter. So you all got a whole be. quarter of scoring, so I thought that was good. And then it, was a low, it wasn't no high-scoring game, but uh, the guy most of was missing it. Yeah, he was injured. Yeah, he yeah was but I, I like that guy because I, didn't, I wasn't familiar with this guy, Chain, or, Mo, or Mo, what his name is? Kevin or Chain? Yeah, yeah. He ran good, you know, but, you know, Tyreek, I think it was a key player in there where Tyreek, the guy, I don't know if it was a 20-yard pass or whatever, but Tyreek, I, I see he's not perfect, but the thing is, I, I like him a lot. Uh, he look like he's trying to, you know, when you try to corner the ball with your body to catch it, uh, a naughty. Yeah. Like the ball coming yeah. towards you, you will fall. And so I thought he should have caught that. And uh, I, I, I like him. I think, uh, I, I want to ask you guys this question, because I, I always fascinated by the stutter step. And that's why I like Tyreek. He's making it look so easy, but, you know, I, I really was pulling for Burley them to win. Because really, uh, it would be counterintuitive, but the AFC Central is something, eh? Listen, uh, um, so you're, you're the state, 50 was a stealer. He's right? a stealer, that's man. That's that's Listen, that's somebody in Steeler Nation slept in the graveyard with a number buck next to Bodie, and they, they, they managed to wake their in miraculously. Wake their in. Okay. But, but, anyhow, but no, but, but no, well, I, uh, I, I think Bodie, see, I, I like Bodie. Yeah, I don't want you to sleep on Bodie. I think Bodie know the game good, you know, because I think it's not a better chance of Kansas City. I put it for them to beat Kansas City, but. Well, well, I think I said they can pull upset because I can tell you why they can pull upset. Kansas City, they 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 are not consistent against a, a consistent running team. Kansas City stops to run up the middle, but they're weak against running to the edges. Miami strength is running to the edges. A healthy, most of the healthier chain is going to open that up. That's yeah, going to open up one across I, I was, the middle, the and guy, eventually the guy, Tyreek Hill uh, down. The guy who plays most that. I was impressed. And, with and guess what? But- Tyreek Hill has played in Kansas City in that environment, in that weather. And if you don't think he's coming back with a chip on his shoulder to prove something to them. Yeah, well, you know, he's shining because yeah. that's, that, that's how it is in the NFL. It seems to me as if when they go back, they, they play better. But I think uh, 
Tyreekus, I rate Tyreek as one of these guys who has mastered the stutter step. And I'd like to hear you and Bernie comment on that because in, in sports, I, 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 I kind of like, like those type of things. I think I see Peyton do it a lot. You know, and a, a, lot of, a lot of the guys seem to be mastering the art of making tackles miss, man. That's, that's how it looks. Like, they have gotten better at that. At the running back position, seems that, like they could spin better. I mean, you guys, when things are more... They're more uh, yeah, outside. yards after the they catch has become more important in the NFL than it was. You know, yards after the run, yeah. yards after contact, yeah. yards after the catch. So the yak is very important so now. So how are we looking, man? So how are we looking? How, how are the Steelers looking, Bernie? Boy, who are y'all playing for? Y'all playing Buffalo in the first round? Let me tell you something. It would not surprise me if the Steelers beat Buffalo. Not because I don't like Buffalo, you know. Just I Buffalo like, do, and they've been playing... Uh, uh, the Ravens was, I mean, you know, we need to talk about the Ravens for a little while now, play. right? So that's who I'm scared of. I really and truly are. You know, I think they could be hard to beat for anybody. But if I hear someone uh, I mean, made a little suggestion that 49ers and, and, and uh, Baltimore, right? But, you know, I, 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 I know maybe you can't. Hold on now, me. hold on. My Cowboys might have something to say about that. Yeah, but you know, I like you or not. But you know it is. But but I, I, I really think they could upset the, the, the Niners. That's just the way it is. Bless up. Yeah, man. Let's see what happens. All right, let's get to the other call. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, Nori. Hey, what's going on, brother? Right there, brother. Boy, look here. I know they can fire our coach, boy. And you know, I pull for the coach. No, uh, Steichen ain't going nowhere, but they really like him. He did a great yeah, job no, with the coach. No, Listen, you no. can't be mad. He did a great job with what he had to do. That's it. We got those guys the on the field. ropes. Four and one. Four and one. Mm-hmm. He's running the ball good. Back. You lost he go and bring in a fella who he, who he catch the ball five times for the year. And couldn't hold on to the ball. We, we had that game. He was going to win that game. And let's be real. You can't really blend that running back because Minshew threw the ball behind him. He was going one way. He had to reach back and try to make the adjustment. Yeah, but, then, but, but he was punching them in their mouth. He, he was running the ball dead hard. Jonathan Taylor was running. Yeah, but good. remember Taylor got Aunt injured. He, he got injured after the 49 yard oh, touchdown. He had a couple of yards and he went out with a heel injury and he was a little bit. Oh, all you want to do is get out one yard and then get the ball in. It's only a couple of seconds, kick the, the, the extra point and game over. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. He's right down there. He's about, what, 14 yard line? But you know, it's easier right said than done in the red zone, boy. Boy, I, 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 I couldn't get, I mean, I didn't get over that easy. That, that is right there. It's but all listen, you can do. Now, Y'all got a good, they Y'all they got a good young quarterback in Richardson coming back, and he's going to be healthy. You got Taylor, who's an excellent running back. You draft correctly in the draft, get you a stud wide receiver to go with, with Pittman. Downs is a good find for you guys. Get you another tight end, bring back that like Dallas Clark element to it, to that offense that, that there's a good uh, tight end that's going to make some plays. Your offense will be fine. Trust me. Lose but, but he, but he, he resigned. He resigned, Pearly. Hold on. He resigned. When he came out, out of the thing, he resigned. He signed, a two, he signed a two year, three year, $42 million deal. You sure? Yeah, but uh, yeah. what if, uh, was, 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 was okay. you saying the Dolphins rather right play KC? Boy, look here. I, I know the Dolphins are the beat pitch, boy. Much easier. No, boy, I don't know. I believe, I yeah, believe I think to be Buffalo. Pittsburgh, I mean, right, the Dolphins are the beat you pitch. You stay right boy. there. You stay right there. But let's see. <laughs> you gotta look at it this way. You look at it this way. You get this ain't regular season. This playoff football. Tomlin yeah. has been there. Tomlin knows how to play playoff football. And you watch. It can be a different story. I go watch it. I yeah. I, I mean, I put it for the Dolphins. I don't want KC to win, but I, I think y'all will do a better job on taking out Pittsburgh. But anyhow, <laughs> you'll, you'll see how, how it goes. All right, my brother. Keep your head up, man. Yeah, man. All right? You all to be back next year. You get ready for baseball now. You get ready for basketball. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Be safe. Hey, only 30 days before spring training. Yeah, ain't nothing wrong with that. But boy, I tell you, I'm, I'm surprised I didn't hear from Mystery Dolphin today. I thought he would call me with the same conviction and tell me I'm right. No, Mystery Dolphin can't call you. Mystery Dolphin picked the Dolphins and the Dallas. Dallas to lose the Dolphins. But Mystery Dolphin was wrong all the way around. He was wrong. Cut wrong. Crazy wrong. So he got to be, you know. He got to be humble right now. Yes. Now, well, I, I tell you, we got a phone call. Let's go to the phone line real quick. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, no, it is Travis from Freeport. Hey, what's going on, Travis? Everything cool, man. Listen, man. I call it just now. They don't give up on them Colts, man. Don't give up on them Colts. Colts got a lot of potential, man. That was a good season for them. Quarterback. Correct. Fresh, new, uh, young quarterback on the way. 
You understand? That, that division right now could look like they're going to be between Houston and uh, the And Colts the Colts for years to come. Yes, indeed. You understand? Don't count out the Texans with a good draft. Don't count out the Titans with a good draft and Vrabel, you know. Vrabel is a, is a good coach down there, man. Exactly. And all they need is one, one number one wide receiver, man. And a nice tight end. That's all they need. But they are. They already have the offensive line. They already have the running back. They already have the quarterback. That's all they need. Who's the quarterback? Richardson. You forget Richardson no, you know, was injured. Talk with the Titans. No, 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 no. I was trying to tell you last time. Carrying that Super Bowl, look. Let you know now. The Cowboys can't beat it. No, 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 no. Oh, hold on, hold on. Let, let me break it down. Who you pull for again, Travis? I the Forty Nine as well. I can give. I can give you all something. Y'all know how to beat. <laughs> y'all know how to beat Dak. I give you that. But this new dude, since y'all beat up on him 42 to 10, known as I give zero F Prescott, y'all don't want no part of zero F Prescott, buddy. Y'all don't want no part of what y'all see there. You know it and I know it. Let me tell you something. Remember now, in this series, if you're a Niner fan, you know this thing is like a pendulum, right? Oh, yeah. And the swing one way, and the swing in there. Ah, so when it swing now, it can swing for us. And oh, I will be here to remind you, my brother. I will be here to remind you. But if, right, I, if things go right, if things yes, go sir. how they should, and you perform how you all should, we perform how we should in Jerry's world where we're undefeated, it is a collision mm-hmm. course for a great NFC great championship game, game with two great old rivals. And over there, like and the over there, like and, the old days, man. And over there in the AFC, I'll tell you, Baltimore is clear cut. But it could oh, be yeah. Miami, Buffalo, Kansas City. There, 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 there's no clear cut number two over there. So I, I still I just, think that there's opportunity, and I still think Miami pulls the upset over Kansas City in Kansas City, and I think Tyreek Hill has, has some revenge in him. I just hope the Baltimore quarterback have a good playoff. Man. He looks like he's let you down in the playoff. No, listen, you can't blame Lamar, and I'll tell you why. That has all been past offensive coordinators' foolishness in the offseason. Oh, well, yeah, he had a lot the, of different coordinators. This now. year, yeah, Monken right. got him jamming. They got the running game there. They got they added Dalvin Cook. I don't know what that's going to be worth, but Flowers is a key. Mm-hmm. Beckham is now heating up and becoming a key. That's freeing up Aguilar and Bateman to get a bunch yeah, of chunk players. Yeah, but Beckham. And then guess what? In a week, Mark Andrews will be back. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, it not right, right in time? You're right, you're right. So you're they right, should be right. okay. All right? All right, man. Yes, but I appreciate you, brother. Don't be no stranger, man. man. All right? Take care. No problem, Good buddy. stuff, Travis. Good day from you, bro. Be safe. You too, man. Bless. Let's get to the other call. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Boy, how you doing, boy? Hey, boy, what's going on? Oh, it's Pearly, that's Sparky, boy. What's going on? Hey, look at Pearly and Sparky. I'm one thing, let me tell you. I'm not sure And you know, I always tell people I'm a San Francisco giant fan when it comes to baseball. I'm a Boston Celtic fan when it comes to basketball. I'm a Pittsburgh Steelers fan when it comes to Football. So you should be happy your students made it. Let me tell you something. I don't know who, I know any other stuff. Most of them are here, too, just because Miami is just 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 45 minutes on playing across the road there. Believe that that's, that's their team. Let me tell you something. I'm so talking to you, Bernie. Wait, look here. Don't, don't worry. I'm so glad when they see them Miami pitchers. I don't even call them Dolphins. Pitchers! <laughs> they pitch it. <laughs> ah, boy. Steel curtain ah, curtain a little bit of but that's all right. Ah. They no shot. They pilch us. You know what pilch it is, right? Yeah. That's them little bony little fist. What you stick on the end of the damn thing? And you, st- you start on the end of part of the dog. So, so Sparky, let me ask you a question. You Steelers playing the Bills this Saturday, man. What, what you got for me? You think the Steelers going to knock off the Bills? Yeah, you know, I was Steelers. Everybody praying now. How many brown bars you could drink for that game? You know how it is. I always tell you, Pony, you're the sideline coaches. You're never qualified to be no coach, but you all know everything but football. Everybody in praying mood now, and everybody who's pulling for somebody, we said they team win. We don't have to, we don't have to um, um, what do we call it, be in, be in the um, playoff now, right? Yeah. But the bottom line is the truth is, I'm not stop talking all these these. these and everything that you and Pony know all the stuff with these children, but men. you all know about these children, but this one. primary school, college, this and that. Man, look at Sparky, you ain't nobody to talk. You know every politician, where they've been, who they people is, where they come from, who woke them up, and all of that, and, and, and other foolishness. Where you going? Some of them, I can tell them where they come from, but when you tell them where they come from, and they live down in Old Fort Beta, 
Yeah. Watch it but I, I, I know where you come from, Spock, and I know where you're going because we got to get to the break, man. I appreciate yeah, I don't you. Come, to Bacala, call, it more. call me tomorrow, man. Yeah. But hey, thanks. thanks. Yeah, boy, Spock, he fired up again. Them Steelers, man, they're probably every, every steal and they mark them in the woodworks right now. Boy, listen, huh, huh. That's all right. Steelers who I didn't even know popping up putting Steelers up on their emoji and thinking uh, on their status on yeah. their Facebook and they're like, where, yeah. where, where, this, where was this energy weeks ago? Well, I know my good friend Siobhan Riley is in Hog Heaven right now. She's a huge Steelers. Oh, husband Jesus. Is a, and her husband is a Miami Dolphin fan, so I know she eats him up. <laughs> I can't say nothing because the, the Dolphins beat the Cowboys this year, so I can't say nothing. We had a little bet and I can't say nothing about him. He's a good dude. Where did you see what happened? Yeah, I can't say nothing. I told you, don't be surprised if Miami and Dallas in the Super Bowl. People think I talk in pool. I, hey, I, I didn't say anything. When we beat you like we did back in the day, 24 to 3, man. I remind you again, too. That, hey, this is not. Ah, oh, Lord. Okay. All right, Pearly, we got to get to the picture real quick, man, because we, uh, we got this lined up to get home right now. We got Richie Eisen lining us up to get us home. And, uh, well, yeah. So let's get the picks going tonight, all bunch. Of course, by the island game. And of course, I guess we got to do NBA tonight because that's all we really got. Pearly dwindling down. Well, you, got, you, got the, you got the, the NCAA F uh, championship tonight, Michigan. Uh, yeah, that's uh, true. Washington. Michigan yeah. is a five and a half point favorite. I, hey, listen to me, man. I'm going to take Washington plus the five points because it's dropped the five. I, I'm going to take Michigan. I, I think Washington has the offense, but Michigan defense too good. I don't know. I think I'm going Michigan tonight. All right, in the NBA, you got Boston against Indiana. Boston on the road, three-point favorite. I like Boston to get it done by three. I like Boston. I'll take the points. I like uh, the Bulls and the Hornets playing. I like the Bulls to get it done. Money line. I don't trust a seven-point cover for the Bulls anywhere, but they play in the yeah. Hornets. I like them to win, but not by seven. The yeah. Thunder by 11 over the Wizards. Yeah, you might be able to take that and get the cover, but play it safe and take the money line. But the Thunder will win that game. Yeah. The Heat minus four at home against the Rockets. I like that. The Heat are excellent at home. Everybody's healthy. Everybody's back. I like him to win by four at home. Yeah, by Jimmy Butler back tonight? Yeah. Okay. Bucks minus eight at home against the Jazz. That's doable. But play it safe and go yeah. with the money line. Yeah. Clippers big letdown game against the Lakers last night. Didn't see that one coming. Lakers That's are robust right. 19 and 19 on the season, Pearly. I know. They'll be all right. Yeah. But Darvin Ham might yeah. not. They're about ready to fire him. Anyway, no, go, the Clippers, I, I give me the Suns in five and a half against the Clippers tonight. I'll take the Suns in five and a half against the Clippers. you do that? Everybody there, minus Beal. KD about okay. to go off. Okay. All right. So, Pearly, I appreciate you, man. We got to get to the break, flip side of the break. You know, uh, we got Colin Coward taking us home today, and guess what he's talking about? Those dangerous Buffalo Bills. Well, actually, it's Rich Eisen talking about those dangerous Buffalo Bills who are playoff bound now, wanting the number two seed. You know what Rich is talking He's trying Everybody's to evoke memories of he's trying to evoke memories of old. You know what I mean? Tim Kelly. Okay. And the Marv Levy kind of bills. Anyway, you All know right. that was coming. Anyway, we'll talk soon, my brother. And I know you got Thursday locked down. I know you got something big popping on Thursday, so we're looking forward to that. But we'll talk tomorrow again, yeah. my brother. Be safe. Okay. Enjoy your enjoy your football tonight, man. I will. You take care, bro. All right, quick break, flip side of the break. Call uh, Rich Eisen taking us home. And we'll see you tomorrow right here on Talking Heads. Right. The new KFC Nuggets have arrived. That unlike the no gets, ours are handmade using 100% white meat. Unlike the no gets, at KFC, we hand bread every day to achieve the perfect flavor. After you try our delicious and crispy nuggets, in the original recipe, you'll never settle for less. KFC, the real nuggets. It's finger licking good. John Shoes and Accessories is your one-stop shop for all your footwear needs. You will find what you're looking for among the growing collection of classic and trendy styles with new arrivals every week. John's covers the whole family and has great prices, helpful and friendly customer service. Your experience shopping with us will be time well spent. Shop with us online at www.johnshoes.com. John's also now carries small home appliances. So come on into John's located on Rosetta Street in Palmdale and Carmichael Road West. John's, we put fashion at your feet. Play with Island Games. We making dreams come true. Play with Island Games. We paying more out to you. Don't mind the noise in the market. You get cash in your pocket. Cause Island Games is spicy and spicy is tradition. So when you play, play Island Games. we put in Bahamian's voice. Guaranteed to pay. Island Games. We like them other jokers. We've been here from the
the start from the bike to computer. Island Games, we can make your dream come true. We play it with Island Games. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Listen, when I talk into this microphone, um, I say everything that I mean, and I mean everything that I say, and I hope you hear it. You know, I'm not one of those folks that just want, I want to be accurate. I want to be straightforward. And I, you know, obviously I'd like to be heard. There are some people in our business that put wanting to be heard first. I'm not one of those folks. I like being heard, but it's not the most important thing. What's the most important? Most important thing is being right. And most important thing is being honest. Nah. Those are two things. Okay. <laughs> Wouldn't you put honest over right? I'm now? sorry. My bad. I want to be honest. And then I want to be right. But I really want to be right. <laughs> And I do. I, I do sit here in this mosh pit of three hours. Okay, we, we you know, there's no this scoreboard. world. Nobody cares. This world. This world <laughs> filled with talk and takes and rats behind. Okay, that are out there. Rat, rat. Okay, <laughs> come on, come on. So you just got shown up by the host. There's lots of talk out there. Uh, now, yeah. here you go. I told everybody in two different locations. This one and Overreaction Monday podcast. So on demand, live, and then live and on demand. There's, honestly, there are so many ways for you, for me to be heard on this subject matter. I told everybody in early December, do not let the Buffalo Bills in the tournament. Don't do it. Do everything that you can to keep them out. And even at the expense of people putting themselves in, they didn't keep the Bills out. I'm looking at you, Jacksonville Jaguars. All I had to do was win in Tennessee. They would have kept the Bills out or have to play for themselves to get in. I told everybody, don't let them in. You know what I told everyone that? I told everyone that after they beat the Jets, after they fired Ken Dorsey and they hired Joe Brady, and that was after... The Buffalo Bills came so close to beating the Philadelphia Eagles in overtime. That team was six and six, and then it became seven and six. Right there is when I told everybody. They went six and five to beat the Jets. They lost to the Eagles to go six and six, and they beat the Chiefs seven and six. And I said, don't let them in. Well, guess what? They're in. They're in, and they're in as the two seed. <laughs> they're in. As the second best seeded team in the AFC. And last night's win in Miami to sweep the Dolphins to put them in as the AFC East champs and above the Chiefs because they beat the Chiefs is an exact microcosm of their season because it wasn't pretty and it was Josh Allen being too much to handle and doing too much for his team to handle. And it was an okay start. And then it was a complete and total disappointment. And then it turned around and finished amazing. <laughs> That's their season. Yeah. That's their season. Losing to the Jets on opening night, even though Aaron Rodgers' Achilles blows up. Then having a really good three-week stretch where they blew everyone out, then going to London where I watched them lose, they lose Matt Milano for the year after they lose Trey White for the year. And then they start losing a ton of games, including a game that almost cost them because they would have been out had the Steelers won and Jacksonville won and they lost. And the fact that the Texans and Colts didn't end in a tie because they lost to the Broncos because they had too many men on the field instead of walking off with it when they lost to the Bengals, when the Bengals were up and down. 
And then they win five in a row to finish up. Six out of seven. Could have won seven in a row if they beat the Eagles, who have been absolutely terrible since beating the Bills. And now they are the two seed. They get not one, but if they win against the Steelers, by the way, you hear that? Yeah, that's my Twitter feed. <laughs> if they beat the Steelers, then they get another home game. And it may just be the first time they take on the Chiefs, but they finally get them in their house. They get them with the train whistles, and they get them with the mafia fresh off of putting out their burning clothes because they jumped into some flaming table and didn't put themselves out in time. Like, that's where they finally get them. Because nobody kept them out of the tournament and the Chiefs have nobody but to blame but themselves and Kadarius Tony's foot. So look out, they're in. And after the game, Josh Allen wearing the T-shirt for a fourth straight year. By the way, four years in a row, the Bills have now won the four. Last team to do that for them, the 88 to 91 Bills, when they started becoming ascendant and then dominant. This is what Allen had to say. The shirt says an AFC East champs. It's a lot, but for a while it did not look like that. When did you have to realize that you still could do this? Um, six and six. You know, we we knew what was in front of us. Had a lot of internal talks. Trusted the guys in this locker room. And um, at the end of the day, this 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 is fun. This is cool. I'll never say no to winning a division. But the only thing that it solidifies is a home game and one more game. So uh, it doesn't mean anything if we go out there next week and don't do our job. So we got we to gotta find a way to put our best foot forward and go, go find a victory next week. Says the guy who turned it over three times but still threw for 359 yards of 30 of 38 with two touchdowns, including a ton of yards for himself on the ground. He led the league in total touchdowns this year. That guy. Go beat Josh Allen now. I told you all, keep him out. Keep them out. And they didn't. That's a problem. That is a problem. This is going to be a tough team to get out, certainly if they're starting to win close games, which is what they're doing. This is supposed to be the time you get the Bills. You're supposed to get them in a one-score game, like in Kansas City, and they didn't. You're supposed to get them in a one-score game, like Coach Giff or Jiff? Was it Coach Giff? I think it's, I think it's okay, Giff. Okay, and Giff. didn't. Supposed to get him in a one-score game like Bill Belichick did previously in the season but couldn't in Week 17, and you're supposed to get him in a one-score game like Miami was supposed to, and Tua was throwing picks at the end of the game. Into a defense that's, I don't know how they're doing it. Scotch tape, mirrors, smoke. The number of, you, you could fill out Half a Pro Bowl defense with the number of guys that Buffalo lost this year and is missing now. And Von Miller, I mean, he's just, he's not, he's not Von anymore. Mm -hmm. To the point where they're like, yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll, we'll get to you when, when you're starting to show that old school burst. Honestly, how the hell are they doing it? They're two. Good luck to the rest of the AFC. That's my headline. That's what I thought when I watched them last night. And Miami, to me, looks like a, a team that can't put points on the board against a defense that A, knows them, and B, can get after them. And next up for them is a team that they lost to in Germany. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. 